Hearing the last words spoken by the Thirukovalar Malay Amon king, who had gained strength as much as knowledge and experience as much as power, Aditha Karikalan did not faint and fall down. But for a while he stopped and stopped. Parthipendra also remained silent. The sea also seemed to be silent. In the distance, even the sound of a lalo of those unloading the goods from the boat and loading them into the trees had stopped. Aditha Karikalan, ashamed of having given way to surprise, suddenly raised his face and said, Grandfather! I heard that some people were talking about such things in the country and cities. I thought it was just a false rumor. Are you saying this for sure? Are you saying it knowingly? Can this happen? He said. Why can't it happen? Before your father, the god whom your great father found ruled the Chola country. Doesn't his son have more right in this kingdom than you? Said Malay Amon Malajadiar. Not at all. That whole Asad, who cannot speak four words, who does not know how to hold a sword in his hand, who failed to be born a woman and was born a man does this kingdom belong to him. He who entered the battlefield in the twelfth Braya without changing the smell of milk, the lion with the head of the mighty Pandian, the valiant warrior who knows no defeat, Aditha do the Karikalers have the right? Sir! Malajade! Are even their intellects dulled by old age? Parthipendra snarled. Karikalan restrained him and said, Grandfather! This kingdom is not for me. If necessary, I will establish ten kingdoms like this with the help of my hand and sword. But what is the justice in this? If I had said from the beginning that the kingdom belongs to Madhurandha, I would not have stood in the way. People know the country and the city. How can I change now that I am the rightful prince to be known by all? Is this acceptable to you? He asked. I do not agree, and I will not agree for a day. If you agree and say that you will give the kingdom to Madhurandha, I will first cut you to pieces with this sword. Then I will cut your mother who bore you for ten months. Then I, who gave birth to your mother, will die with my own hands. Life in my body. Until then, I will let this Chola kingdom go away from you. As the old man roared, his dim eyes flashed. His whole body trembled in the excitement. Parthibendra said, Say so, grandfather. Say so. Shouting, he ran and embraced the mountain. Tears welled up in his eyes. Karikalan also looked towards the deep sea for some time. Then he looked at Patanar and said, Grandfather. If that is their intention, why the hesitation? Let us immediately gather an army and leave for Tanjore. We will exterminate the Palyavatarayas and their members Malyavarayars, Sambhavarayars, Matarayars and Pundayarayars all at once and capture the fort of Tanjore. We will imprison Madhurandhagan. We will release the emperor. Their blessings are upon us. If that is enough, if I and Parthibendra join forces, who on earth can defeat us? He said proudly. You cannot be defeated in battle, it is true. But what will you do if you are opposed by intrigue and conspiracy? As soon as you approach Tanjavur with the army, they will make up a story that the son is coming to fight the father with the father. They will say that the emperor has given up his life, unable to bear the shame. There may not be people who believe that. In that situation, what will you do, child? Your mind will also weaken. Can you bear the reproach of coming to fight with your adopted father? Aditha Karikalan covered his ears and shouted, Shiva Shiva! I can't bear to hear. He said. That is why I said in the first place, dash that great danger surrounds us. What's the trick, Grandpa? What's the trick? First a man of faith must be sent to Sri Lanka. He must be sent and brought back by Arul Mazai. He will not leave the battlefield, leave the soldiers under him, and come to Isles. He must send someone who has the power to bring him back to his senses. Parthipendra came forward and said, Sir! If you consent, I will go and fetch you. He said. It is Karagalan's wish, your wish. But the one who is going should not interfere in unrelated matters like Vandiyadeva. See? Did I say that? 
said Parthipendra. Have you received any information about Vandiyadeva, grandfather? asked Aditha Karigalan. At first I even had my suspicions about him, that he might have joined our enemies. Then those doubts subsided. Have you seen it, will you see it? said Karigalan. Let him tell the whole thing. Are you in such a hurry? Sir. What suspicion did they have about Vandiyadeva? I came to know that he was also there on the day of the meeting at Sambhavarayar house. But later I came to know that he had nothing to do with the conspiracy. Grandfather. How did they know all this? I didn't get an invitation to the Kadampur Palace party. I got a little suspicious about that. Then, after coming back to the town, I imprisoned Kundra Turk Kaisar on the way and took him to my hill fort. I got to know everything that happened there from him. Vandiyathevan was a friend of Kanamaran, the son of Sambhavarayar. Yes, the two of them were in our army, right? They both guarded the banks of the North Penna. I know that they had developed a friendship since then. Anyway, Vandiyathevan was in Amalikai that day. It was not possible to know whether he was involved in the conspiracy or not. Then we found a way. When we found out that Vandiyathevan had stabbed Kandamaran in the back inside Tanjore Fort and escaped. Grandpa. I will never believe this for a single day. Vandiyadeva is not the kind of person who can backstab someone no matter what he does or not. And even more so he is not a sandal who can backstab a friend. What if that friend is found to be involved in a conspiracy against his master? If that friend has perhaps tried to include him in that conspiracy? Anyway he would have fought face to face and never backstabbed. I marvel at your faith in your friend, brother. Let the truth be what it is. The Palyavatarayas are hunting Vandiyadeva on the charge of stabbing him in the back. That much I know. Therefore, Vandiyadeva and Kandamaran must have had a quarrel of some kind. Is it not certain that he did not join the conspiracy against you? There is no need to testify so far. If Vandiyadeva joins our enemies, then this earth will turn upside down. The waves and seas will dry up. The sky will collapse. The sun will rise in the night. The Chola clan will reach all destruction. Aditha Karikalan said excitedly. I will agree with what the prince says. Vandiyadeva will never betray us and join the enemy. I have only one crime against him. Vandiyadeva will shake his head at the sight of a beautiful woman's face. His matey will faint. Hearing this, Aditha Karikalan smiled. Knowing that, I gave the leaf to the emperor and sent him to go to Ilay Abrati. If he has seen the princess once, why escape? To be her slave. He said. Immediately Malay Aman asked, Oko. So you have sent word to Vandiyathevan? I didn't know. Did you get any news from Vandiyathevan after you left Tanjavur? Or at least from Ilay Aprati? Said. I've been waiting every minute. No news yet. After Aromazai comes here, we have to bring your sister here too. Then we don't have to worry about it. It's enough if we leave all the ideas to Ilay Aprati and listen to what she says. Grandfather. Are you worse than Vandiyadeva in this matter? Yes, Karikala. Your sister was a tyrant when she was only two years old. She used to control me, your grandmother and your mother and father to her will. It is the same with me now. She is the law for me. Karikala. Don't think that it is less for you if you talk about your sister. It is your pride. Nothing else. No man or woman has ever been born with such wealth of knowledge as Ilay Aprati Kundave. Don't you know what our first minister Anirutha Brahmaraya is like? If he himself asks Ilay Aprati for ideas, what else is there to say? Said Malajadiar in a single ecstasy. Parthipendran said to Vandiyathevan, That's all right who said no. But what if Vandiyathevan had been mesmerized by looking at another woman's face before seeing Ila Apirathi? For example, if he had seen a Mahini called Ila Iyarani at Pavur. He spoke the last words in a low voice, so that they did not fall on the old man's ears. 
but Aditha Karikalan fell on deaf ears. He suddenly turned and looked at Pathapendra with sparks in his eyes. That sight made the Pallava hero nervous. Malay Aman stood up from the rock and said, Parthapendra. You are leaving for Ceylon tomorrow, aren't you? You youths will have enough to talk about. I am going to the old man, Mela Mela Palace. After you have said what you need to talk, come back soon. Said. Shouldn't one open up to such a friend? Can't you tell me what pain is? Shouldn't you give me an opportunity to find some remedy? How long can I sit idly by watching them suffer inwardly? Atanga said eagerly. Aditha Karikalan heaved a long sigh and said, Friend. My heartache is an endless agony. An agony that I must die with my life. There is no remedy for it. But I don't mean I shouldn't tell you. I will tell you tonight. Now let's go to the palace with the old man. It is not advisable to send him alone. Saying that, he got up from the rock.